Good morning and welcome to Wake Up Well this Friday morning. This week we're having a focus on prayer. We've got our furnace week here, which is a week we're setting apart to pray. We're filling prayer slots and having live stream times of prayer. We want to find out more how do we pray and what is prayer. So this morning, let's have a look at Luke chapter 6, verse 27 and 28. Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you and pray for those who mistreat you. That's a tall order, isn't it? That is the upside down kingdom. Loving our enemies, doing good to those who hate us, blessing those who curse us and praying for those who mistreat us. You know, Jesus takes it further. In Mark verse 11, verse 25, he says, when you stand praying, if anyone, if you hold... If you hold anything against anyone, forgive them, so that your Father in heaven may forgive your sins. And so there, it's even more than praying. It's actually we need to come and forgive, receive his forgiveness, so then we can pray. Then we can bless those who are against us. You know, you may find it sometimes easier, isn't it, to pray for those arbitrary enemies. Maybe it's a terrorist group or things going on around the world and where we can look at where maybe evil is happening and we can pray. We can stand in the gap and pray and maybe we're praying that they'd have Paul-like conversions where, you know, they suddenly get in a revelation of who Jesus is and step out of their evil that they're creating around them. But what about when it's closer to home? What about, is it that neighbour who's parking the car right inside your house in what you class as your space or the noise or maybe it's the people around you, the people you work with, the things that feel very personal, where someone hates you or is speaking all kinds of things against you or deliberately hurting you. What does love really look like? Because that's the upside down kingdom. It means to love. It means to pray for. It means to bless. You know, This week, I was thinking in my own circumstances, what if instead of just ruminating or talking about where someone has hurt us or offended us in any way, but we actually spent more time praying for that person? Imagine what difference that makes. Or what about those things um, we see around us that affect us? Maybe it's decisions politicians are making, the way the country's being led or things in response to the current crisis we're in or our finances. Imagine, again, if we spent as much time praying for those politicians than simply giving our peace of mind or ruminating on it. You know, Jesus wants us to walk in his strength. You know, the only way we can really pray and love our enemies is through his strength. And the only way we're going to do that is receiving it. And we do that as we receive his forgiveness. And that's why it's so important that we come and we first forgive those who have got anything that is putting a block there for us, those who've hurt us, betrayed us. Then, as we receive his forgiveness, then we can pray. And what it does is it means that we can see things from his perspective. We can see what's going on to pray for their circumstances, to really love them, to turn the other cheek. And that is where his kingdom is. And that is infectious and that is life. And how much better would we feel instead of walking around angry and annoyed to actually start to pray? Because we start to speak the language of heaven as we start to bless, as we start to speak life, as we start to receive his love so we can love in the face of pain, in the face of wrongdoing. So bless you today to walk in his forgiveness and in his blessing.